Hello everybody and welcome to my Afterthoughts video, this time regarding the controversial part number five of the Rocky series. Man, I know a lot of people said, well, you know, it's not going to be so good and uh, maybe you should skip it. So I was fully prepared to be a little bit disappointed, you know. But at the same time, of course, I saw that Stallone wrote the screenplay and I think he's an awesome writer, so there was also hope so i was also optimistic at the same time and as you guys know i ended up liking the movie very very much and i will tell you why and for all the people who didn't like rocky 5 i will try my best to maybe show you a little bit different perspective of this movie and maybe who knows maybe you end up liking it a little bit more because i think that rocky 5 deserves to be liked just like all the others. So let's get started. First of all, I think the movie started out very strong. Um, we had this little flashback montage, of course, where we saw Rocky fighting Ivan Drago. So that was exciting. And then we end up in the shower where um, Stallone asks for Adrian. And Adrian shows up and we find Rocky very disturbed. He sits there and he says, to Adrian that he thinks something broke inside and he can't stop his hands from shaking. I mean, oh my gosh, this was a traumatic experience right there. I mean, a few minutes in the movie, I was already emotional because we care about Rocky, right? We love the character. So we're with him and seeing him sitting there on the bench, great acting by the way, sitting there with his shaking hands and he says, I just want to go home, Mick. I mean, that broke my heart right there. That was horrible to see. That shows you the, the state of mind he was in. Calling Adrian Mick, that was just horrible. So I think that was a very strong start. And at this point, I was asking myself, what do people expect now? Do they expect Rocky to just climb into the ring and fight the next bigger and stronger opponent, bigger and stronger than Ivan Drago? I mean, I didn't expect that at all. I was actually hoping that Rocky would um, retire because that would have been a, a lot more um, realistic situation and we don't want to see Rocky being damaged, you know? So that was still up in the air. And then we go to the next scene, a next huge twist, completely unexpected and unpredictable, which is, is a good thing, you know, that makes movies great. We learn that Polly. He gave a power of attorney to Rocky's accountant and that accountant was a crook and all the money was gone. I mean, a brutal situation. The Rocky family lost millions of dollars. They were forced to sell the house and sell the cars and sell the bikes. They had to sell everything. I mean, a devastating scene, unbelievable. And then you see Rocky going through some boxes, you know, and he takes out some old clothes and the old hat and he put it back on and we're being taken right back to Rocky one where it all began you know seeing him in those clothing with that with that hat and it was just brutal Rocky was back to square one having nothing you know so amazing scene and then he goes for a walk walking through the neighborhood just like back then you know and he visits Mickey's old gym and the gym was very run down, which was kind of sad to see because there was so much history, you know. But then we had this amazing flashback scene with Rocky and Mickey. I mean, that was just so touching to see those two men having this private moment talking about, you know, Mickey was talking about that the reason why he wanted to stay alive is because of, of you, of you, Rocky, you know. And then he gave him the necklace and everything. And that was such a, a touching scene and we cannot just forget those scenes you know that that was amazing so so that was great and then if that was not bad enough it gets even worse rocky goes to the doctors and he finds out that he has uh, irreversible brain damage i mean oh my gosh you know could it get any worse now rocky lost his wealth and he he lost part of his health and and he lost the ability to make money through boxing and he lost his license. I mean, really brutal situation. And 
you know, it, it's hard not to feel with the character. And I was so hooked at this moment because I wanted to see how it's going to continue from there on. So there was nothing boring about any of those scenes. And I was, I was just thinking Rocky, psychologically speaking, you know, it's a very difficult situation to be in because, you know, because we had those snake soulless promoters show up and they try to manipulate Rocky into getting back into the ring and fight again and make a little bit money, you know, and, and those promoters, I mean, that really exists on this planet. Those people don't care at all, you know, they just want to get you into the ring. You can risk your life and your health and everything, and they want to make money off you. It's, it's a brutal, brutal business. And I thought it was nice to expose that a little bit, you know, so Rocky was in a very difficult situation. Are you going to do one more fight? Are you going to risk your life? And the promoters even went so far to bribe the doctors to conceal the medical records, you know. So a very tough situation. And it actually made me think of all those poor people who were put into this terrible situation where their employer pretty much put them in an ultimatum, you know, almost like blackmailed them by saying, hey, either you take this vaccine or you're going to lose your job. And, you know, for a family man who, who needs to support his family, that's a very tough situation to be in, you know? And you gotta ask yourself, is it worth just taking the vaccine and maybe be permanently damaged, you know? Or are you gonna give up your job and try to, to survive in a different way? And that's pretty much the situation Rocky was in. And I feel for all those people who are being put in situations like that. So I was very much hooked to see how it was continuing from then. And, and then of course, Tommy shows up, you know, Tommy shows up and Rocky was reborn. And Tommy was very sincere at the beginning. I mean, he had a great pitch. He was talking about not having any family and, and he's passionate about boxing. He knows everything about Rocky and, and he knows that Rocky never gave a, a, got a chance until Apollo came along and he himself never got a chance and he knows that Rocky can make it happen and please give me a shot, you know. And it was very convin convincing and Rocky takes him on and manages him. And I thought that was a very good idea because I thought Rocky opening up the gym again and maybe taking on some boxers and manage them, that is a great way for him to make a living, you know, and still be around the boxing business. So. That was great and Rocky really started living through the eyes of Tommy. I mean, it was very apparent. Tommy won, Rocky won, and it made him very happy. It was great to see, but at the same time, he started ignoring and neglecting his family, you know, especially his son. His son even asked, hey, dad, can you train me? Uh, and Rocky didn't have time. He had to train Tommy and, and Rocky did a very good job because he lifted Tommy up to even become a contender, you know, and then it was all about the title fight. And of course, then those snakes, the Duke, the promoter came back into the picture and started giving money to Tommy and a, a new car and an apartment and the woman, you know, he just pretty much bought him off, you know, and that leads us to another amazing scene when they were um, celebrating Christmas, you know, the, Duke and, and Tommy and the whole clan shows up at the house and we have this great scene between Rocky and Tommy and, and Tommy pretty much tells him look I'm, I'm, I'm gonna sign with Duke tomorrow because he's gonna give me a title shot and Rocky really tries hard I mean desperately and passionately tries to convince Tommy no don't sign with this Duke he doesn't care about you you know he's gonna control you he's gonna, he's gonna own you if you sign this contract and he doesn't care about you, he's gonna throw you back into the gutters once you're done, you know, you should not sign with him. He tried everything and Tommy didn't wanna listen. He just uh, said, look, uh, I'm gonna sign with him. You can train me or not. It's my way or the highway and he drives off. And that was another brutal moment, which leads us to another amazing scene. I tell you, this movie has one great scene after another. So, so Rocky is outside on the street, has a little breakdown, you know, he's like, I don't want this, war uh, this life anymore, very understandably. And, and Adrian comes along, gives him um, a jacket, 
and has this amazing speech again. You know, it really reminded me of Rocky III when she had this iconic speech at the beach, you know, and this time was outside on the street. She tells Rocky, look, when you were in the ring taking all those punches, I was there in the ring with you, you know, and I know how it feels when somebody like Tommy comes along and wins, you know, I understand. But for God's sake, you know, you, you, your son is lost, you know, and Rocky, you're losing your family, she says. And it was just such a heart-wrenching moment to, to, to witness that conversation. And of course, then ultimately they end up hugging and, and Rocky says, yes, I understand. It was, it was just one of those awesome moments or awesome scenes that I will not forget so easily. And that makes the movie great, you know. I still haven't seen anything uh, that is wrong with the movie. And then it continues and uh, Tommy, of course, ultimately fights for the title and he wins. And again, even though Tommy really betrayed Rocky big time, Rocky still cheers for the kid and he still lives his life through him. And, and there was one of the greatest visuals that, had, that I have ever seen when, when Tommy on the TV screen, he punches the opponent and, and Rocky punches the punching bag in his living room. I mean, seeing that was just amazing. I mean, you couldn't make it more clear that Rocky invested all his emotions and feelings into this guy and living his own life through, through Tommy, you know, it was amazing. And then, of course, Tommy wins and uh, he accepts the belt and he has his little speech and he talks about the little angel on his shoulder that he would like to thank for making all this happen. And he mentions Duke. Oh my God, I could not believe it. I was just another knife right into the heart. I mean, brutal, brutal. That's the ultimate betrayal. And Rocky, of course, he was completely crushed, you know. He didn't show it as he never does, you know. He said, ah, it's okay. It's just, ah, don't worry. I'm just gonna go out for a beer, you know. And then he ends up at that bar and then Tommy and Duke and the whole clan show up again. And Tommy challenges Rocky for a title fight, you know. And that's where I thought, ah, oh, maybe that's the reason why a lot of people don't like Rocky V. Because I thought if, if, if Rocky accepts that title fight and he ends up in the ring with Tommy, I would hate that too, you know. I would not like that and I would completely understand you guys saying that you didn't like Rocky V because Tommy is such a dirtbag, he's such a bum, he's such a horrible person. He does not deserve to be in the same ring with Rocky, the people's champion. You know? He does not deserve a title shot. That would be just horrible. And the promoters don't deserve it. They don't deserve having those fighters in the ring, risking their lives and make money for them, you know. I really would have hated if this would have happened. But it didn't happen. It didn't happen at all because Rocky was not interested in any of that. So I was still totally with the movie and still wondering why people don't like the movie. And then, um, of course, once um, Tommy knocks out Polly. that was crossing the line, and then um, Rocky had enough and challenges him outside for a street fight, and we saw an exciting fight. And of course, everybody expected a fight in a Rocky movie, and, um, including myself, you know, and I think we got this fight. It was a different fight, of course. It was a street fight with no rules. It was very intense, very brutal, going back and forth and back and forth, and ultimately, Rocky beats this bum down, he knocks him out and he wins against him. And that's when I realized, I think I know why some people don't like Rocky V, because the people expected to feel a certain way at the end of the movie, right? Because there was this, uh, this specific Rocky feeling at every movie so far, kind of a, a an inspirational achievement, feel good feeling. We had it in Rocky one, in the second one, in the third one, in the fourth one. We always had this great feeling, jumping up and down. And Rocky V was different, you know, because in Rocky V, we didn't have this, this inspirational achievement, feel good feeling. We rather had 
it felt more like a satisfying revenge feeling, you know, because we all thought, yeah, good for you, Rocky. You knocked this bomb out. That's exactly what Tommy deserved, this dirt bag, you know. So it was still a, a, a great feeling, but we weren't jumping up and down because the feeling was different. And I think that's probably the reason why a lot of people say, oh, it didn't, it wasn't the same. It didn't really fit the Rocky franchise, but just because one expected a certain feeling and that expectation didn't come true. One shouldn't have expectations to begin with, you know, but just because of that, the movie is not good. I completely disagree. This was great. Yes, I agree the feeling was different. It wasn't this inspirational achievement, feel good feeling. It was rather a satisfactory revenge feeling, you know, but I was fine with it because you got to be open for it. You got to follow the character's journey no matter where it goes. And I, I don't think anybody can argue that the story wasn't good. I mean, this movie was packed with great scenes, one after another. You, you could laugh, you could cry, you could feel with the character. We even had a great subplot with the kid who had to go to a new school and got bullied, you know, and had to stand up for himself. And there were great dynamics between father and son and great dyna dynamics between Rocky and Tommy and Tommy and the family and Adrian and Rocky. I think it was all there. It was a fantastic journey and I really, really liked it. And I guess now it's off to Rocky VI. And a lot of people agree on that. They say Rocky VI is awesome. So I'm looking very much forward to it. And I hope you'll be there too. So I'll see you soon. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.